Aberration. The third and perhaps most unique DLC map to survive on, switching up a new perspective to adapt to and with it a new variety of creatures purpose built for this no flyer hazardous underworld. But which are your favourite creatures? You're right kids, it's Ras Clark and welcome to another top 10 as voted by you. Don't forget to like, subscribe, share around and let's get into it. So in at number 10 is the Aberrant Dire Bear. The bioluminescent variant of a great early choice comes in as your first pick, and a worthy one to get you on your feet. Possessing no differences to its normal counterpart apart from aesthetics, the beauty of knocking these out to tame is that honey is literally everywhere, taming almost as well as its preferred kibble, and with that needing to be level 45 to ride means you can farm as much honey as you'd like safely off the back of Yogi with its alternative swipe. Found throughout the fertile green region, not only is a great choice for gathering berries, meat, hide and chitin, excelling especially at fibre and organic poly, but it packs a punch. Whilst its primary attacks deals decent damage and can be executed whilst running where it can reach incredible speeds to compete against the best, its secondary swipe has a huge area of attack, reaching all the way to its back legs. With a high carry weight on top and 35 insulation when riding, it's the all-purpose mount to get you started right off the bat. In at number 9 is the Feather Light. Light pets are an absolute necessity when exploring the deeper areas of aberration, and when it comes to versatility, the beacon bird is the perfect choice, but the hardest to claim. Found only within the most dangerous areas, needing to be prepared with hazard gear or getting lucky to find them on just the border of the blue bioluminescent zone, passively tamed, preferring plant species Z seeds, grants you a shoulder pet to clap on and emit light, keeping nameless at bay from spawning around you and debuffing reapers to be killed easier. Able to level its subsequent charge capabilities for your light emittance, but can actually prove useful against more powerful enemies. Able to equip a helmet in a pack can be sent out to swarm enemies, moving at speed around them, but being a flyer and possessing a much better 50% off weight than most light pets can be used to grab your first rock drake eggs, transferring your obtained egg straight onto it and whistling it away from danger whilst you scurry for freedom from the drake gang giving chase. In at number 8 is the Basilisk. Subsequently following the last entry, drake eggs are exactly what you'll need when it comes to obtaining these incredibly tanky damage dealing giant serpents. Found across all three main regions, though rare to discover, especially seeing they're normally buried, with portal being a good suggestion to farm, taming can be a complex process. Needing fertilized drake eggs or magma and wyvern eggs if transferring from another map, you'll need to maintain its aggro at all times, ensuring it never buries itself, but keeping a safe enough distance to drop eggs to it until tamed. Saddled at 85, the Basilisk boasts an incredible high weight with 50% off stone, faster than all but a few creatures, but one of the best health stats in the game, combined with strong torpor inducing bites that can be used to tame with and a poison spit that can reach incredible numbers effective against the strongest. With a lack of oxygen on top and the ability to bury, making it both a hidden vault storage and able to ambush from underneath, only being countered by explosives, it's a much more versatile tame for all scenarios than it's given credit for. In at number 7 is the Bulb Dog. The much more iconic light pet when it comes to the map, with a face only a mother could love, comes in as perhaps one of the first creatures you should be looking out for. 
Again, passively tamed with plant species Z seeds, though aquatic mushrooms are a reasonable second choice, it too boasts the same anti-nameless and reaper charged light effects as any other pet on the map, notifying you of any creature on or above max level around you when turned on, as well as enemy players within a 140 meter radius respectively. And with a large charge capacity, again 50% off weight and a bonus of constantly defecating, allowing an early choice for fertilizer, the globulus, found very commonly all over the green fertile region, can be a handy shoulder friend to kick off your aberrant adventure. In at number 6 is the aberrant spino. In a map of unique creatures, anyone desiring a more traditional offering can do no better than the reskinned hulking menace of these Cretaceous beasts. Found roaming all lakes within the fertile region as well as the inviting red hazard zone if you really wanted to, preferring exceptional kibble once knocked out, the bipod provides a comfort of roaming the map behind some razor sharp claws. Saddled at 71 and having immunity to radiation can see you tackling the hazardous regions and able to stand against most that lurk within. With water almost everywhere on the map, merely touching it provides a hydration buff of 20% movement speed, 15% attack damage and 25% health regen. With a tanky health pool, a hard melee attack that turns into a knockback flurry when in its bipedal stance, you've got a great mount to travel and farm meat off most on the map. In at number 5 is the Carcinos. The farming companion's choice, there's no better tool to take out to grind than the giant omnivore crab. Found along most rivers and easier to tame at than the abundance lurking in the blue bioluminescent regions requiring a catapult, turret and boulders or a cannon but with a good chance of killing with the latter best to make a trap to lure one in or if being quick to set up, net gunning one to knock out with ease. Once fed its preferred exceptional kibble and saddled at 65, you've got a jack of all trades to accompany you on ab. Boasting a high weight, lacking an oxygen stat and immune to radiation, it possesses an incredible jump, able to scale most of the map with ease. Turning on a dime, it provides two separately operated claws, able to hit hard and with a tanky health pool, taking 20% less turret damage. It can be incredibly effective in most tense moments, but its claws do much more than fight. Able to grab almost anything in each of its claws, then to launch great distances if choosing to, combined with its weight and health means it can dual wield tanky stegos to bullet soak, or harvesting dinos such as does and ankies, and go to town on the wealth awaiting in the bioluminescent regions. In fact, up until later maps, this was the best way to farm metal, and with an Anki in each and pillaging the wealth of metal on the map. Still a pretty good hide harvester and an excellent choice to chainsaw for organic poly and chitin, the multiversed warsteed is an excellent choice if playing exclusively on the map. In at number 4 is the Ravager. Whilst in smaller stature than most on the list, the cave wolf can stand up to the best as a fantastic all around choice for grinding, fighting and adventuring. Being uniquely one of the only creatures to prefer meat, with mutton coming in trumps, once knocked out, tamed and saddled at 47, you've got a companion that can reach places most can't. Found all over the green fertile and blue bioluminescent regions and usually in packs with a pack buff, meaning the higher level is much easier to spot. And yes, with a pack buff means it provides greater damage and resistance with 
three or more around. It's decent stamina and speed with a relatively high jump can see you traveling around the map with ease, especially so with zip lines being one of the few that can travel up and down on them to reach vertical challenges with little worry and no need for extra player equipment, packing a great bite to take on most creatures once leveled. But its weight reduction abilities are highly underestimated. With 50% off crystal, fiber, fungal wood, green gems, metal, obsidian, stone, thatch and hide can make it the perfect choice for resource hauling when leveled in weight. And being a small, versatile adventurer, a perfect choice for cave exploring at least two of the dangerous artifact caves on the map. In at number three is the Aberrant Megalosaurus. The sleepy Jurassic Carnivore comes in as one of your top choices, and rightly so, because on Aberration, sleep deprivation is a thing of the past. Found throughout the blue bioluminescent and hazardous red molten element regions, knocked out, preferring superior kibble and saddled at 57, finds the once only nocturnal killer an always awake powerhouse exclusively on Aberration alone. Possessing an incredibly high base damage bite, setting it as an apex above most on the map, especially when bred and mate boosted in a pack, it is a force to be reckoned with. Possessing a grab attack, allowing you to pick up small to medium creatures and shake them within its jaws, dealing 240 damage, though riding does scale the secondary attack to one as to not kill anything picked up on purpose, but in a pack you can and will find Megalos melting through most on the map in quick succession. In at number two is the Reaper. An unsurprising choice to see so high and with very good reason, but with great power comes great birth ability. Not to be confused with its surface or subterranean king counterparts to tame, you'll need a queen, found only within the red zone, and then needing to lure it to a trap to begin the process. Needing to take its health down to below 2000, needing a light pet to do so, you'll need to turn that light off, await a pink hueish glow, and proceed to stand in front of it until it sniffs you out, grabs you, and indeed impregnates you, giving you an allotted time to kill the best experience giving creatures you can, in the time offered to achieve an extra 75 levels, before birthing a baby xenomorph in a contained unescapable area, ensuring it kills you with stacks of meat on your body, or eating reaper glands to check on it, otherwise losing the baby be if hitting you or any creature repeatedly, and awaiting it to grow to adult, imprinting it along the way. A lengthy process, but if using the right trap and in close proximity allows you multiple pregnancies, and worth doing to breed up one of the strongest creatures in the game. Needing a charge light source to weaken without boasts a whopping 80% damage reduction, the equivalent to a 400 armor saddle, and needing no saddle at all can see you either melting opponents with its high base damage, slowing them down with acid shrapnel, dealing some damage, or whipping them out of existence with even more damage. With an incredible jump bounding across the map when held down, you've got an incredible hard-hitting tank that can easily be hidden and used for storage in those needed moments to unleash and take on anything on the map, but seemingly not the best for the map. And before we get to that, let's take a quick look at the creatures that didn't just make the cut. And here it is, in at number one, the Rock Drake. 
the undisputed companion for travelling aberration. The gliding Draconis is the payoff deserving once you've put the work in to get one. Needing you to travel to the drake nest at the very bottom of the radiation zone and stealing an egg from their nest, initiating every single one in the area to give chase. Your first can be a very dangerous trip and an exhilarating adventure if done on foot. But once you've got that egg, you'll likely not travel the map on anything again. Needing to incubate with a lot of air conditioners and feeding nameless venom to raise up. Once saddled at 75, you've got an all-terrain transport, able to glide, jump through the air, launch itself at any surface, and climb along any wall or ceiling from any angle. Meaning you've finally got something to venture the dangers of the surface, allowing you to farm all of the rewarding drops given during night cycles, while still being strong enough to fend for itself with a light pet. Able to render itself invisible at the cost of stamina allows to sneak by enemies undetected, meaning the depths artifact cave especially becomes a breeze to navigate and an almost necessity for than anything else. Able to detect enemy reapers with its hair standing on end, it can also double as a quick aquatic mount underwater. Not as much a necessity on Ab, but giving it a multi-terrain award. And being able to shoot from its back gives you a great choice for taking on the guardian of the map, the big bad Rockwell, to unlock its ultimate reward, the Rock Drake Tech Saddle. And did you agree? Comment below. What map would you like to see voted next? My name's Ras Clark. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And as always, ah, oh, peace out. Oh.